Hello, everyone. Good evening. Hi, good evening. Sir. Hi, sir. Good evening. Good evening, guys. Good evening, everyone. Uh, shall we start our class? Yes. Yes. Sure. So let me open my PPT. Okay, so in our last class, uh, let me open this one. So in our previous class, we were trying to understand what is container, what is Docker. Um, and after that, I have explained what is OS law virtualization, what is union file system, layered file system, right? Those things we have seen in our last class, right? Let me give a quick overview of yesterday's class. Simple guys, container is like a normal machine, just like one EC2 instance. It's a normal machine. So if you want to create a container, you have to take a Docker image, which is available in Docker Hub. In Docker Hub, we have so many images are there. Image, image means nothing but an operating system having 5% of that features, okay, without Unix. Red Hat image user means it has only Red Hat features, no 95% of Unix. Okay. So we take this image, from that image, we create container. That means this is Red Hat container. So this is like a normal machine in which you can you can go inside, you can install some softwares, you can do whatever you want, just like the way you use your instance in the same manner. Okay. So here one advantage is if it is having 10 softwares, from that you can create one image. Okay, you can create one image. That means from container also you can create an image. That image contains this OS. Plus the software also. That is all. So when you can see those softwares, if you create any container, then if you go inside, then you can see those software. You can add few more. You can uninstall all those things that you can do. Okay. Yeah, you understood what is OS law virtualization, union file system, dead file system, right? All those things. Okay. Now let's try to understand the advantages of Docker. Okay, Docker advantages. The first advantage is OS level, that's what, containerization, means OS level virtualization. So the container doesn't have any, uh, I mean, say here, no need guest OS. That means container need not to have 100% OS, no need. Just only 5%, remaining 95%, it will depend upon base machines OS. That is what OS level virtualization. Container is depending upon base machine for 95% of Unix. Okay. So that's why we call this one as a containerization or OS level virtualization. So no need complete guest OS. Okay. So it depends for that guest OS, it depends upon base machine's OS. Okay. That is the first advantage. That means here we are saving, we are saving, you know, hard disk, a lot of hard disk. Right. No pre allocation of RAM. That means you need not to reserve RAM. During runtime, whatever it needs, it takes that RAM. After that, it will release so that others, other containers can use that RAM. Here we are saving a lot of RAM. Correct? Third, we can replicate same environment. That means, see, this is Docker Hub. 
from docker up i took one image from that i create container in that i have installed 10 softwares now i want every every member who is working in my project should have 10 softwares that is what i want in that case i have two choices either i can inform them that hey you please install 10 softwares but if i do so they may or may not install properly correct So instead of that, the smart way is what I do. I install ten softwares in my container. From that, I create one image. Let's take image name Y. That image I share to everyone, all members in my project. So from that image, they create container. See, so from the image which I shared, the copy of that image which I shared, from that they can create containers, and that container all in that container by default these ten softwares will be there. That is so. So if you you might be thinking, say, how are you going to share that image? Simple. What we do, we to share image also. I'll I'll tell you later on how we are going to share. Anyways, I want to share practical. I often think that yes, we can share. Okay. So, so here we can replicate same environment. That means whatever environment which is there in my container, others also will have the same environment, same version of software, everything same. That's a smart one. Less cost. obviously see since it, it consumes less hard disk and less ram so base machine need not to have higher configuration suppose if you uh, if you compare with vmware and oracle virtual boxes okay so here RAM, in this docker container docker consumes very very less uh, this configurations like you know hard disk and ram okay that's why less cost you need not to spend money for ram and hard disk for your base machine got it less weight why it is like light weight because see os itself is just 5% only os itself is just 5% no light weight light weight okay it contains only 5% only right that's why it is light weight os is in mb only 60 mb 70 mb that But if you take VMware's or Oracle virtual boxes OS, that contains 10 GB. Okay, that's our next advantage. Okay, since lightweight, that's why <coughs> operations will be pretty fast. If you take 150 kg person, one more guy is there called 50 kg is weight. Who runs faster? Obviously, 50 kg. Correct. So lightweight means operations will be pretty fast. since it is lightweight that's why fast to fire up fast to fire up means booting loading would be pretty fast because underlying operating system base machines 94% is already running the os is already booted means already running you need to start only this 5% os the 94% is already ready so that's why fast to fire up you can start container within 1 second because most of the operating system is already ready and running right that's why fast to fire up One second, guys. It takes to start and then can run on physical virtual or cloud. Let me show. See, if you want to create a container, you need one base machine. Correct. You need one base machine. That could be your physical machine, like you have your laptop. This is a physical machine. You install Docker and you create containers. That's what. Can run on physical. Virtual means any virtual machine. Like you know, okay, uh, you have a one uh, any machine is there. On top of that, you install any virtualization software. We have many software. We have many or like lots of ones. Like many software software. Any virtualization software. Then we create VMs, virtual machines. That virtual machine is also one machine, right? Right? Virtual machine. In that OS is there. here you install docker here you create containers like right. right now these containers are there where on virtual machine you can see this is a virtual machine that is also possible and third way cloud machine means you take any ec2 on top of that you install docker then you create containers that is also possible that means irrespective of underlying platform see here it's a laptop with a physical machine here this is a virtual machine vm and this is a cloud machine ec2 so irrespective of underlying platform you can create containers anywhere can reuse the same image again and again 
see here reusing means what actually happens here okay this is docker hub from this hub i have taken one image from this i created one container okay container a okay i created one container this image name is one in that i am going to install some softwares from that container i can create one more image okay so this image two so image two contains os plus all softwares so this image i am going to share with my team members okay fine so with that image they can create content that already you <coughs> right what actually happened when you create a container see from image when you create a container that container will take the copy of that image so we'll see this is my ec2 instance okay from this one this is a image okay when i create a container it takes copy of that image then it will create container understanding right okay so see here, this image is there let's take image 1 this image either i take from docker hub or someone shared me assume that someone shared or i put it from docker hub okay i put it from docker hub so from you know from that when i try to create a container that container will not hold that image it will take the copy of that image it creates container so i can create one more if i create one more container it will take one more copy of that image it will create one more container so from one image you can create any number of containers because every time you are creating container it is taking the copy of that image okay like that so we can reuse that same image again and again you can say correct or not? that's all. and can create virtual sorry can create machines in less time i told you that within fraction of seconds within one second you can create containers pretty fast okay yeah so there are some docker components are there what are those first one is docker image docker image contains what what is docker image it contains os very small means that's what only 5% almost or that side it's almost negligible plus some software also correct or not? see there are two use cases here one is this is docker hub okay i am taking this image image a from that i am creating container see so this in this case this image a is con it contains only os correct image a is containing only os then by going inside container i install some software from that i am creating one more image called b so image b contains os plus software so image contains os or os plus software okay in this diagram image a contains only os okay image b contains os plus some softwares got it that's it docker container you can see you know right content container is like a normal machine which is created from docker image so container is a, like a normal machine which is created from docker image correct or not that that also you know. what is docker file yeah there is one more concept called docker file see docker file is just a normal file one text file it is a normal text file in which we put some instructions like which os what are the softwares okay so docker file is a normal text file in which we keep all instructions okay just all instructions like which os what are softwares when you execute this file when you when i execute this file one image will be created docker image you can think of it is c okay this is one more way through which we can create image that mean there are total three ways through which we can get an image there are total three ways what are those three ways you can see the first one yellow color you can see that image that we pulled from docker hub that is the first way of getting image second way is you can create image from your own container that's the second way third way is you create from docker file docker file is a normal file in which you keep instructions 
when you execute that file, automatically image will be created. As per the OS that you mentioned, software. Docker file. It describes steps to create Docker image. Okay. What is Docker Hub? Either you can call Docker Hub or Registry. Any of the names you can use. So Docker Hub, see, you know, right? It contains all images, stores all Docker images publicly. Means anyone can pull that image publicly available. Docker daemon. Daemon means service. See, we install HTTPD, we started HTTPD service, correct? So that service only we call daemon. Daemon means, daemon means backend service, it runs. So here also after installing Docker, we start Docker service. That only we call daemon, Docker service, okay? So these are Docker components. These five we call as Docker components. Docker image, Docker container, Docker file, Docker hub. Okay. Now. Okay. So we'll, let's take developer or DevOps engineer. DevOps engineer. So DevOps engineer. Now what she is doing? She has created one Docker file, in which she kept what is the OS she wants and uh, what some software she mentioned. From the Docker file, she can create an image. See, she created one document. From that image, we can create cut demons. Okay. If she wants to share this image, okay, if she, if she want, wants to share this image, then she has to upload that image to Docker Hub. Okay, so, so that's all same. If you want to share Docker image to anyone, you have to upload to Docker Hub. From there, people can pull that image. You can see they pulled this image and from that they create container. Like that. If you want to share, you have to upload to Docker. From there, we are going to do that. Also, we are going to do it practically. Okay. Now, ways to create Docker image. So, total, there are total three ways to which we can create Docker image. <laughs> there are total three ways. The first way is you take image from Docker, right? directly, you take existing images from Docker. Second way is create image from your own container. From your container, you can create Docker image that also, you know. Third way is create image from Docker file. So these are third way. So there are total three ways through which we can get a Docker image. Okay. Fine. For what we'll do now with this theory, let's jump into practicals. 